इलेक्शन का था कुंडली और सी एन एन आईडिया दिस इज टीवी एटी एंड यू आर वॉचिंग सी एन बी सी टीवी एटीन प्रेजेंटेड बाय नेशनल स्टॉक एक्सचेंज focus ideate innovate enable Hello and welcome to another episode of NSC Finviz powered by CNBC TV 18. Today we are in Kolkata at the corporate head office of the largest coal company in the world, Coal India. Coal India Limited is a state-owned coal mining corporate and the single largest coal producer in the world. Operating through 81 mining areas, Coal India Limited is an apex body with seven coal-producing subsidiaries and one mine consultancy company spread over eight provincial states of India. Focusing on our theme for the series, NSC Finviz visited Coal India Limited in Kolkata to gauge thoughts and notions of young professionals on investments and financial planning. Investment uh, for me would be uh, something wherein I I take some goods or uh, probably some money that is kept aside and uh, that would have a futuristic approach that in future will be uh, a wealth for me it will create income for me it will benefit me i do uh, know about some financial products like uh, there are mutual funds and uh, there are insurance products as well as uh, you can go into maybe real estate as well and gold is also another option apart from the usual fds which are there basically the banking sector this is one of the core areas of an economy so i would like to ask uh, the experts uh, as the banks are not doing provisioning for npas non performing assets much so i would really like to know like what are the likely impacts of npas in the banking sector and also on the economy as such well we are now joined by our two very special experts we have gajendra kothari who is the md and ceo at etika wealth management and we have uday dhut who is the deputy ceo at international money matters thank you gentlemen for being here uday first question to you the very basic rule how do i start a good financial plan you can't just save and say i have no goals no plan no idea i have to look at okay what am i saving for so the first and the foremost important thing is what are your goals putting your goals and writing them down is the most important thing that you can do for your financial plan so i want to go for my post graduate 3 years down the line i will need say 2 lakh rupees for that i want to buy a car 5 years down the line i need 7 lakh rupees for that i want to buy a house 6 years 7 years down the line i need 20 lakh rupees for that putting those goals down putting a value against those goals that is the most important step that you can take to make a financial plan everything else then works backwards how much do you need to save in what asset do you need to save all of those answers will come once you have that particular item very clearly sorted out okay gajendra now it's obviously important to set your goals which leads to how you start saving it and then investing it but you know very often these are young professionals your first or second job and it's very difficult sometimes they say that you know at the end of the month i don't have anything in my hand to save to invest how should they counter that how should they work around that so there is a famous saying by warren buffett you know he says don't save what is left after spending spend what is left after saving you know and 99% of the uh, 99% of us we do the first step and that's why we can never become rich because our earning is limited the spending there is a question mark because we don't know every month how much we are spending and so there is a question mark on the savings also if you reverse this equation let's say you are getting 1 lakh rupees per month as your salary second of the month if you put aside 20000 rupees for your goals then 80000 is left just go and spend that amount you won't feel guilty also right but we do the opposite the moment you can do it i can guarantee you you'll all become rich maybe 20 years down the later because then you're disciplined you know so that's very important who they talking about discipline now discipline is another attribute that's really important because you need to discipline your investing plan but I mean, I've seen this happen a lot when when related to equities, which people do a lot. Is suddenly, if the if the market's gone up, they're saying, "Let me put more and more money." And if the market's go down, they say, "Let me not put money." But that's not the right way to look at it, right? How how how's what's the correct way? How do you control this behavior? 
So, uh, we keep saying this behavior as, as the famous thing which is basically at times greed drives us, at times fear drives us. As in, uh, and, and this happened in, in markets not very uh, back, say three years, four years back in 2008. I, I recollect and uh, there were people standing in lines wanting to open DMAT accounts. Why? Because everyone wanted to invest in an IPO and thought they will make money. And what was driving people? It was greed which was driving people and, and the same thing happens in the same year people are standing behind, uh, outside in bank and wanting to withdraw money saying that this bank won't be there anymore. So this greed and fear, none of these things actually worked. Uh, the IPO didn't make money, the bank didn't go down. So now for people, it's, it's a human nature, right? If we will get scared by what we see in media, what we see in papers. So how do we kind of move ourselves against that? I think the only way, which I said, and I come back to my first point is putting what my goals are. When I know that, okay, my goal is say short term and say after one year I want to go for a holiday. What are the kind of assets that I will choose? I will choose assets which are not very risky, which can be liquidated in a year's time and which will give me some sort of a guarantee yes, that I will get my, my money because I need it after one year. I am very, very clear that I want to go for that holiday. So I will not put that in say in equities, in, uh, in risky assets. Similarly, if I have a 10 year goal, then I am willing to take risk. It does not matter to me. I know today uh, the most important question is which government will come in the next three months. But it does not matter to me because my goal is 10 years later. I need an investment which will give me protection against inflation. So I am saying when you are making your investments, if you can bifurcate and say, okay, this money is long term money. This money is for my retirement. I have 20 years for this money. In 20 years what is going to happen, frankly nobody knows but what is short term so basically figure out what is your time horizon to invest and then accordingly choose your asset class what is inflation I re everybody reads about it in the paper you hear it on the on the on the news channels inflation has reached this inflation has reached that figure but i am a retail investor how is inflation affecting me do i need to even pay attention to that number you have touched my favorite topic you know so inflation we all know what is inflation it's basically rise in prices you know so rise in milk prices or fuel prices right so that's called a normal inflation you know what, at what rate this inflation is growing in India? So this is around 9 to 10 percent. So which means whatever you could buy last year at 100 rupees, today you have to pay 110 rupees to buy the same item. Okay. Now do we do, can we do anything about this inflation or can we stop consuming these items because it's growing? No, we can't. But you know what is my biggest worry and particularly the, most of the individuals here in this show are young people. Okay. My biggest worry is something called lifestyle inflation, which is our own created. And I'll give you a classic example. My brother, 25, he was wearing, he was very comfortable wearing Titan fast track watches. What does Titan fast track watch cost? 1500 rupees. The day he got engaged, his fiancee gave him a 7500 rupees Tommy Hilfiger watch. So the guy who has always been used to 1500 rupees watch now is wearing 7500 Tommy Hilfiger watch. Can he ever come back to a 1500 rupees watch in his life? No. The problem doesn't stop there. Since he got a gift from his fiancee, he has to give a return gift also to her. <laughs> right? Can that, can that return gift be less than 7,500? No. So he ended up giving a 9,000 rupees designer back to her. Just imagine these guys at 25 age are now used to such thing. It's very difficult. And that is what is worrying me. So, so mobile, we all today use smartphones. Five years back there was nothing called smartphones. It all cost 30,000, 40,000 rupees. But we all have today. It has become a necessity. That's called lifestyle inflation. And right from head to toe, we all want to be branded, absolutely. That's called inflation. And there is no cure for that. Yeah. There's no investment which can match lifestyle inflation, you know. Okay, so then Uday, the million dollar question. How do I, if there's no way to, how do I somehow, if I can't beat this lifestyle inflation, how do I match it or what can I do? So how do I keep my wife, fiance, girlfriend happy and still be able to beat inflation is the question, right? So that's a difficult one. How do you protect yourself against inflation? So basically inflation is eating onto your wealth in some manner or form. So let's say if some of you are saving, how do some people save? Some people save saying that there is money lying in my bank account. How much is it earning in my bank account? 4%. On that I have to pay tax at 30%. So after tax I get 2.8%. So if I kept 100 rupees in my bank account, after one year it became 103 rupees. Inflation is at 10%. So I am actually minus 7 rupees, right? So, so that is where inflation is. So you need investments in assets that actually beat inflation. Now what are those assets that are there? Uh, we'll talk about both financial and physical assets. Some people say uh, real estate is a very good investment and which beats inflation over longer periods of time. 
yes, a real estate is a possibly a good investment, but it's a fairly <coughs> bulky investment. It's not an investment for people who are just starting their careers because you can't put 2,000, 3,000 rupees in real estate. Right? The other asset that beats inflation is equities. Again, over longer periods of time, not over every three months, six months. So you can look at equities, you can, you can look at uh, real estate possibly after a point in time. Now, recently, government has started introducing a new type of bond which is called inflation linked bonds. These are basically like fixed deposit, but there the return is secured from inflation. So the government says that you can buy these bonds, you will get whatever is inflation plus one point. 5%. That's for the uh, CPI bonds that have been there. There are some issues in terms of taxation, but possibly our feeling is that they will become a very important product for any retail investor who wants to beat uh, inflation. So these are the products that one can kind of look at. You're watching NSC FinWiz powered by CNBC TV 18. It's time for a very short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome to India's Business Newsroom. CNBC TV 18 is India's number one business news channel in 2014. CNBC TV 18, 14 years of business leadership. In the last 10 years, the SMEs have really come a long way. Today we have the SMEs which contribute 50% uh, to our exports, 50% to employment, 50% to industrial output. And all this is being powered by approximately 50 million SMEs. So that's what uh, the whole sector has emerged into. ICICI Bank, Business Banking and CNBC TV 18 present the Emerging India Awards 2014. Presenting sponsor ICICI Bank, Business Banking. Powered by Crystal. Dive deeper into their minds. This particular bout of inflation certainly came as a surprise to me. Grasp their ideas. You will see India's tax revenue go up exponentially. Explore the world's most pertinent issues through their eyes. I think India in general is on a very, very firm wicket. In an uncensored conversation with the big, the bold and the beautiful in business. If the laws I have outlived their utility. I would be the first to say, let's review the laws. The Appointment on CNBC TV 18. Who knew a conversation could be all this and more? Channel Japan. Get the latest stories from Japan as they happen on the ground. In this episode, improving the office environment with better furniture and layouts. Technology that copies physical movements. Popular local restaurant chains. Every week, direct from Tokyo, Channel Japan. Who says you can't profit from markets on a weekend? Tune in to CNBC TV 18 on Saturday and Sunday mornings to prepare yourself for the week ahead and get a head start that you will profit from. Taking stock at these times, only on CNBC TV 18. Take a look at the heartbeat of the Indian economy. Is the economy overheating? Or is there an infusion of liquidity needed? Get your weekly health check on the economy with Indianomics at these times on CNBC TV 18. Indianomics brought to you by Star Health Insurance. Welcome back. You're watching NSC FinViz powered by CNBC TV 18. Today we're in Kolkata at the office of Coal India Limited. Gajendra, then let's talk equities first up to try and beat, uh, to protect ourselves against inflation. When we're looking at equities, uh, again, layman investor might not be sure of what equities are, how to go about the right way. And there's always, I mean, you've either faced it yourself or you've heard it from someone who said that this is the tip, go invest your money, it will double, triple, quadruple and it becomes like 10% of that. So what's the right way to get into equities? Uh, very good question. Uh, in fact, you know, people think equity is more like a casino or a gambling, you know. You know, aaj paisa dala aur chhe mein double. You know, and today, the longest duration in, in equi equi equity investing is now becoming five minutes, six minutes, you know, thanks to derivatives. You know, that is the longest duration. So equities is, people look equities from, from a, you know, a stock point of view. You are buying a company, right? When you are investing, you are investing into a company. Now, can you expect, let's say you invest in Tata Motors. Tata Motors is a good company, right? So can you expect every quarter, you know, for Tata Motors to perform by 20%, they, 
they may have a bad time. The economy is going through a rough patch. So if Tata economy, Tata Motors is not doing great, your investments in Tata equity, uh, Tata Motors is also not doing great. So you have to give time. You know, equity is like your baby and I mean, when we do engineering course, it takes us four years to become an engineer, right? You can't become overnight. So everything takes its own course. You know, we have to give time and have patience. And in the long term, you'll be rewarded. All businesses, one fundamental you should always remember, in the long term, equity will always give you more returns than debt. If that was not the case, no company would have put their own money in equity. They would have been happy doing fixed deposits. The very fact that they're earning more than debt is that what they're taking chances and going and creating empires. And the best example is Warren Buffett who for his life has made money by just investing in smart people, smart companies. He says there are many smart people out there than me, then why should I kind of do homework? I can just put in them and let them make money for me. So then how should I get into uh, mutual funds? What's an uh, easy way? Because again, let's a uh, young professional, they might not have that much money at the end of the month. So is systematic investment plan a good option for them? So uh, I'll first talk about mutual funds. What is a mutual fund? Mutual fund is not only about equity market or share market. In mutual funds, you can do investments which are very similar to, say, fixed deposits. In mutual funds, you can do investments which are very similar to savings bank account, wherein you can put in your money for three weeks and take that money out of three weeks. So you have all kinds of options. So mutual fund is just a vehicle. It's, it's like a bus that you take from out here. It can go to various stations. You have various products that you can do through mutual funds. So the important bit is you know what you are kind of looking at, whether I am looking at a fixed income kind of a product, whether I am looking at an equity kind of a product. So it gives you all kinds of flavor, all kinds of risk, all kinds of time horizons, short term, long term, very long term, medium term, all kinds of horizon. Uh, now what we call the SIP, uh, which is systematic investment plan, is very similar to what you do call a recurring deposit with a bank. In a recurring deposit, you put money regularly in a bank deposit. In an SIP, you put money regularly in a mutual fund scheme. It does not mean that an SIP only has to happen in equity markets or equity funds. You can actually do an SIP in any kind of fund, the short term funds, the long term funds, the medium range funds, any kind of fund. So basically mutual fund SIP acts as a very good vehicle for you to start saving. Uh, sometime back we are talking about first save and then spend, right? So if you know that this is the date my salary hits my bank account, first, second, third, put some SIPs for yourself so that automatically the money gets debited out of your bank account. You don't have to do any extra work to save that money. Money goes out and gets invested in these funds and uh, that's how you will sort of uh, start saving and creating a good portfolio for yourself, a good corpus for yourself. Let's talk a little bit about real estate because that is also an important class and it's been in the news for the last few years. People are very excited about it. Your advice to new investors, should we get into real estate? Because there is this talk that, you know, um, for example, I have my first home. I'm staying with my parents, so I have my first home. Second home, let me put down the down payment. Let me get, put it on rent and offset that rent against the EMI. Is that a good way to go? Uh, I don't agree with this logic. I, in, in fact, this is a very flawed logic. You know, many people go, f even for the first house, they take a loan. Now, I have no personal uh, thing against that. But, you know, it's it's looked like if you don't have a house, you are you're not considered kind of a part of the society that way, you know, because you think that you still don't own a house. But what I believe is that many people, and particularly for the second investment, it's not a good idea at all that if you think that I can take a house on EMI and I can offset it with a rent, because uh, the EMI cost is, uh, the rental yield is around 2% and the EMI cost is 10, 12%. So every year you're down by 10% and you're only hoping that it will appreciate in the long term and it will give you, which may or may not be the case, okay? And second is that real estate is again a derivative of economy. If people think that real estate will always go up, it's, it's a myth. First equities will have to go up and then only can real estate go up and I'll give you a classic example. Uh, we all into jobs, right? And we all want to aspire, we all want to buy a house. How can you buy a house if next month your salary doesn't come? Which means first your job has to be there. And how long your job will be there? As long as the company is there, right? So first the company has to grow, then you will grow and then you can buy real estate. So it's again all interlinked. So it's not a safe investment, you know, it's a, it's a product of the economy, it's a derivative of the economy. Well, then another favorite asset class, especially with the ladies, is gold. What's your take on gold? How important is it? And in India, of course, everybody, we, ha we have this culture, where we have, Indians have a lot of gold, but it's usually in the form of jewelry. And so it's not, uh, I mean, it's kind of tied up somewhere. So what's your take on gold, the importance of gold? See, like, uh, like you rightly said, uh, both gold and property 
uh, they are kind of personal assets and we are very very sort of emotional about both of them so we are not talking about the assets that you have which are your personal assets we are talking purely on gold as an investment why would you buy gold as an investment gold does not give dividends gold does not give any kind of interest the only way you can make money in gold is the price that you bought gold at that price has to go up so if you bought gold at 20000 rupees then it has to go to 30000 rupees that's the only way you are going to make money uh, people have various theories one theory is that gold basically protects your money against inflation uh, at times it works at times it does not work uh, in the last one year gold has actually gone down right so a lot of people said gold is the safest asset class not necessarily so i think fixed deposit is a much safer investment than gold so again this is our belief is that gold works well when there is uh, it's, it's like a form of insurance when do you need insurance when there is catastrophe right when you don't know what is happening that's when gold will do well so i believe that gold is like an insurance that you can buy for your portfolio and pray and hope that that this insurance does not come to play at any point in time you're watching nsc finviz powered by cnbc tv 18 it's time for a very short break but after this the audience puts forth their questions to our experts don't go anywhere we'll be right back this week on rd360 jim grant of course is the publisher and editor of grant's interest rate observer author and financial historian oh, so an expert is a specialist 100 miles from home or more right <laughs> so <laughs> what i think i see in india is the prospect of an exciting uh, realization of growth that's been latent for many many years if you know that that stocks get overvalued why do they still get in at you know these lofty levels uh, don't we know that it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all entrepreneur with passion courage and perseverance then nominate yourself for the emerging india awards in the woman entrepreneur category icici bank business banking and cnbc tv 18 present the emerging india awards 2014 to nominate yourself log on to emergingindia.moneycontrol.com presenting sponsor icici bank business banking powered by crystal Did you know having a voter ID doesn't mean you can vote. Your name must also be in the Election Commission voter rolls. To check, SMS your voter ID number to 98454 98454. न्यूज़ जो अंदर बोर्ड रूम्स में और एक कमरे में होती हैं ये मेरे ख्याल से कंज्यूमर को जिस टाइम वो घर ले रहा है पता होना चाहिए. जो पैन इंडिया प्रोजेक्ट लॉन्चेस हो रहे हैं उनका क्या हाल है आगे आने वाले एक्साइटिंग प्रोजेक्ट्स कौन से हैं जो आज 3000 फुट के घर हैं आप नजर रखिए 700 800 फुट के घर आएंगे तो टिकट कम होगा नॉट नेसेसरीली प्राइस bop.in प्रेजेंट्स cnbc आवाज रियल एस्टेट टीवी प्रेजेंटेड बाय bop.in वर्ल्ड ट्रस्टेड रियल्टी एक्सपर्ट्स Welcome back you're watching NSC Finviz powered by CNBC TV 18 it's now time to go over to the audience as they put forth their questions to our experts sir in the very beginning you stressed upon the fact to have a proper goal for your investment uh, given the turbulent market conditions and uncertain global economy and of course internal factors like inflation how does one calculate even remotely how much fund i will be requiring by the time maybe i retire somewhere uh, around 2050 say how do i calculate that even remotely and plan accordingly thank you any planning process that begins can never be perfect i'm saying there are there are economists sitting in world bank imf and so on and so forth they they do so many projections they say there are in, in statistics there are there are lies there are damn lies and there is statistics and i recently read there are forecasters also added to that group so it's very difficult to forecast but you know what happens is when you start that planning process you kind of know how much in water you are it will not be correct it will require you to relook at things but to just answer your question is that let's say only for retirement i think it's difficult it's very difficult for anyone to forecast but we can take some assumptions we can say okay the inflation will be likely to be this and so on and so forth and so on but take a 20 year projection 30 year projection i'm certain that none of us will get it right i have taken lic term insurance which is an uh, nearly yearly 15000 rupees 
uh, for per year, per year and it's uh, my risk cover is around 50 lakhs but there are several uh, private uh, insurance company like aviva they are offering 9000 9000 or 10000 rupees and they are giving a claim for 1 crore or 2 crore like this so my question is uh, how, why it is why the, there is a difference and should i go for this uh, private insurance or not okay very good one very good question so a term insurance is a term insurance no matter where from where you buy okay it's the same now every company has their own process to identify at what rate they will sell this insurance okay and there's no standard process now most of these private insurers are offering at a very cheap rate now there is some logic to that a that is bypassing the agent or commission so you are directly involved with the company you're buying online so there's nobody to help in the process so that's why the commission which they would have you know given it to the agents is now saved so that saving is done by you second thing you should realize who why i mean why they're doing online they they are doing this for smart people for online tech savvy people so that they know what is the term insurance and they can buy on their own right and these are today's generation people you are working in an ac office in cold india limited so you are at very young age at 21 you are buying right so the premium is very low because you are healthy you are healthy and you are an educated conscious person this cannot be the same about let's say a, a, a village in patna you know in bihar the there the medical facility is not there so the cost of you know the, the uh, average lifespan is much lower there on that note thank you gajendra thank you udai for that and thank you. thank you so much for having us here thank you well that brings us to the end of this episode of nsc finviz powered by cnbc tv 18 and it also wraps up the series where we've traveled across the country and shot with the young employees at 20 different companies and we hope we've been able to guide them so that they can secure a financially stable future for themselves from the entire team many thanks for watching focus ideate innovate Enable. Presented by National Stock Exchange.